back in a landmark uh, moment, uh, one of the most significant in the history of India's missile and nuclear programs, an Agni-5 missile, was tested today with multiple independent re-entry vehicles. In simple terms, this means that a single ballistic missile with multiple nuclear warheads has been tested. Each warhead is located each in the cone of the missile and can strike an independent target. The test from Abdul Kalam Island of the coast of Orissa comes within days of India announcing a NOTAM or notice to airmen and sailors telling them of a no-fly zone out to a distance of 3,550 kilometers and almost simultaneously a Chinese spy ship, the second one to deploy in the region in the last month being detected well off the coast of Vishakhapatnam in international waters. With today's test, India joins a select group of nations to develop this technology. This is actually an image uh, of the missile which was tested today, released in just the last couple of minutes. The test also affirms India's success in developing small nuclear warheads which fit into the nose cone of the Agni-5. All of this changes nuclear deterrence, not just in the subcontinent, but in fact across Asia. It gives us a capability that China has, but Pakistan doesn't. Well, joining us now, uh, a very special guest, Dr. V.K. Saraswat, former DRDO chairperson. Uh, he's a Padma Bhushan recipient. He's with the, uh, the Niti Aayog and somebody who knows a thing or two about missiles. Uh, I'm also joined uh, by General D.S. Huda, uh, the former Northern Army commander. I'm also joined by my colleague, Pallav Bagla. Dr. Saraswat, thank you very much uh, for being with us. Uh, in simple terms, what does the um, test of this missile mean for India's nuclear and missile programs? It actually takes India's nuclear deterrence capability to a next level. It gives us with this the second strike capability, which will have much higher potency, much better influence, and much better danger zone. You know, this missile can now direct multiple warheads to independently to different targets. That means the radius of influence will increase way even with one missile. And India having its policy of no first use. So whenever there is a counter act attack to be done, it will create a much better annihilation, even with one missile. And the number of missiles that will be required to be launched in future against an enemy attack would be less. So this is called force multiplier, in my opinion. A major technology in terms of missile technology, control, guidance, precision, all that which has been achieved through this launch. I would like to congratulate my colleagues in DRDO who have done this wonderful job achieving this particular technology, which is among the only first five nations who have possessed this capability today. Dr. Saraswat, when you started out on the missile program years and years back, uh, you know, we had uh, the basic variants of the Prithvi missile. We moved on to the original variants of the Agni missile. From where we were to where we are now with this, could you tell us um, the difference in technology and the evolution of the program? Yeah, actually, Agni technology started in early 1983-84 when Dr. Kalam launched the program called Integrated Guided Missiles Program, where we started building a re-entry technology. And the first launch of Agni re-entry vehicle took place in, uh, in May 1989. And subsequent to that, weaponization program started which led to the development of Agni-1 missile, Agni-2 missile, Agni-3 missile, Agni-4, Agni-4P. And in 2012, we launched the first Agni-5 with a single warhead to a range of more than 5,000 kilometers. So the journey has been very, very uh, interesting because it developed all the technologies of very large size boosters, very good high precision inertial navigation system, and re-entry technology so that you can go to very high, high altitudes and come down to the atmosphere without burning the payload and the warhead uh, and making the desired impact. So the precision which has been obtained in those cases has been further amplified and improved by this precision targeting of the multiple warheads today. A journey which is certainly bringing self-reliance in this missile technology to a large extent and also making our industrial sector to participate in a big way as the supplier of the various components and devices. And today they have the capability to do many of the things themselves. So it's a total collaboration between DRDO uh, industries and academia, which has resulted in this kind of technology achievement. 
Dr. Saraswat, this is also a confidence in miniaturization of a nuclear warhead. You don't build a missile with MIRV capability unless you have small nuclear warheads to put in it. So obviously everything that we did in Pokhran 2 uh, was done well enough or even after that uh, lab tested well enough, computer uh, simulated well enough to fashion small sized warheads. And the fact that we are doing this is because we have confidence in that nuclear program of ours. Is that correct? Uh, absolutely. This is an evolutionary process where you go from a large size to small size, but increasing the yield all the time. So this is the evolutionary process of any nuclear technology. And India is no way behind in this particular segment. Uh, sir, um, you know, people keep asking, what is the range of the missile now? There have been some records, uh, reports which say about 5,000 kilometers. The NOTAM or Notice to Airmen shows that it, uh, it flew out to 35, 50 kilometers most likely. But See, is it important? Is given based upon the fallout which is likely to happen in the case of any uh, eventuality. But the range is always, as Agni 5 has been identified with the range of 5,000 plus. So it will be always in that region. Don't go by the no term dictation, because no term is basically covering the fallout which may take place in the event of a malfunction or eventuality. Is this an ICBM, sir, at 5,000 kilometers? An intercontinental? I don't think by the conventional definition of ICBM, ICBMs are in the range of 10,000 kilometers plus. I would put our missiles are in the range of IRBMs and uh, because 5000 plus range uh, generally as per the codification of the missiles uh, is in the range of IRBMs. But the bottom line sir is that it meets our requirements because whatever targets we seek to hit in China or Pakistan are almost fully covered. So that uh, our requirements are met by that. See our threat profile meets uh, these missiles meet the complete threat profile what we have today. So, uh, with respect to that, I think we are well prepared, whether it is any sector. In fact, I was just telling somebody, if one has to uh, decide what is the interference zone from the launch site, which is a variable point because it's a mobile launcher, you can draw a circle of the radius of 5,000 plus kilometer and you can see what is the coverage it will provide. Yeah. So, depends upon who is the enemy and from where the counter missiles are coming, we can engage all of them. General Huda, as uh, uh, for our Chief of Defence Staff or our uh, Air Force, uh, Navy, uh, Army Commanders, Chiefs, uh, what is the presence of this in our arsenal? Once it does enter our arsenal, it's still being tested. What are the implications of this being in our arsenal, this technology? So, Vishnu, uh, firstly, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with uh, Dr. Saraswat. Uh, we had worked together in the Strategic Forces Command uh, when he was the Chief of the of the DRDO and uh, you know honestly uh, compliments to the DRDO uh, we often criticize them for what they're doing but as far as missile technology is concerned uh, the manner in which you know we have adopted this is is huge uh, huge compliments to them what does it mean uh, Vishnu look around the world today and you are seeing that the international arms control regime, particularly with nuclear weapons, is weakening. We are having problems between Russia and, uh, and the US. Uh, we see proliferation happening around the world, North Korea, Iran. Uh, we see our adversary, uh, and I'm plainly staying, stating this, uh, China is modernizing its arsenal. If you want to keep our deterrence in place, and our strategic deterrence in place, we just have to keep pace with them. And I think, uh, you know, this more technology that is, that is coming is uh, just a way to make sure that our deterrence is strengthened and that our strategic capability keeps space with what the adversaries are doing. So it has, it has a huge sort of, uh, I would say, a geopolitical implication in how India looks at strategic stability in the subcontinent. Yeah. Pallav, could you tell us about the team that, is, uh, that has been behind this particular program, Agni 5? Well, Agni 5 is a long journey, Vishnu, and today's test is a culmination of what happened. And trust me, I first saw the MIRV back in 2012. I saw it then. I have had to keep my lips sealed all about it. But today, after it has been tested and revealed to the world, I can say 
Yes, I saw it then. And it's been a long way in the making. Uh, MIRV is a critical technology. And these are all, if you ask me, you have a general on the show and you have uh, uh, Dr. Sarswath, whom I respect very much. These are all essentially weapons of peace. These are for deterrence. They have to keep the enemy and adversary at bay. And having successfully tested an MIRV sends a message that if you have anti-ballistic missile technology, we can evade that even in a single missile by sending several warheads which can target different locations. And as uh, uh, Dr. Sarswath had explained earlier to me, uh, the, the missile, the mother missile, Agni-5, can launch several baby missiles and this can happen at an altitude of about 300 to 400 kilometers above your target. And these small baby missiles can then go all over the place, anywhere, and they are autonomously guided. They have their own attitude and control system. So this is a very sophisticated technology which India has developed. And only a handful of nations, I'm told only the P5 nations have this technology. So India becomes literally the sixth country to have this technology. Yeah. And it, by the by the day, we are making records which will make India a very protected nation when we want it to be. Yeah, Dr. Saraswat, just a point um, to try and understand uh, the re-entry vehicles. These aren't powered, right? Uh, however, they are guided. They have the do they have the ability to maneuver as well as they target different areas? Yes, the, the, that is a major modification that this MIRV re-entry vehicle can maneuver, it can actually what we call as the post boost vehicle. The post boost vehicle has got all the capability to change its attitude, take even 180 degree orientation change for launching the variants in a different direction. It can do it at different altitudes. So there, the, it has got the uh, high altitude maneuvering capability and the re-entry payloads, which are actually independently guided, they can maneuver towards the pre-identified target. So uh, based upon the kind of atmospheric disturbances they face, they maneuver, guide and reach the desired location. Yeah. And a final question uh, uh, to you, General Huda. Um, uh, we are seeing unprecedented growth as far as China is concerned militarily. They've just raised their defense budget by, I think, 7.2%. We are well short of that. We are not in the same ballpark. Uh, how does a force multiplier like this essentially mean that China cannot take us for granted? No, so, uh, as I said, uh, uh, and as uh, you know, somebody on the show also mentioned, these are, these are weapons for peace. So we are not looking at these weapons as weapons for war fighting but at deterring wars. And so, I mean, that's the basic reason why we have built up our uh, strategic capability and have built up our nuclear capability. So I think it's the, the way we are expanding, the way we are technologically improving uh, our capability, it is meant to uh, send a signal to our adversaries that look, wars are going to be very, very costly for you. And therefore, you know, please be deterred from doing it. That, I think, is the basic sort of concept of why we have built up our strategic forces and strategic strength. Yeah. Dr. Saraswath, one final question to you. Um, composite technology uh, to ensure that um, metallurgy and avionics, quite besides the rocketry, uh, have all been built up because of the extreme stresses and the extreme temperatures that the warhead has to be able to sustain before it deploys. Uh, in terms of um, leaps in our technological evolution, how are each of these three factors significant by themselves? I would like to mention to you that all these three technologies are present in the present today's launch. The rocket motors which are powering the first stage, the second stage and the third stage, all are composite rocket motors. The, av uh, the avionics is indigenously built RLG-based navigation system with accelerometers, which are high precision accelerometers. The control system with indigenously built actuators and uh, electronics. So the entire system, uh, whether it is control, it is composite materials, whether it is the guidance and navigation package, 
all are well within the technology domain of the india's capability today we are self reliant in these matters we we know how to manufacture composites we know how to manufacture design and build the navigation package and that is what is responsible for the precision which we are able to achieve for reaching the target all right look it's been fantastic speaking to all of you uh, it is a uh, an incredible day for our uh, for our armed forces and the defense of india in fact it uh, sends out a message to the entire world and uh, positions india not just in south asia but across asia uh, as a more formidable military power but again the point that's being said is that nuclear weapons are a weapon of of last resort and uh, god forbid we ever have to use them but should they act as a deterrent which is what they are de they are designed to do it would perhaps make all of us safer in our country I'd like to thank all our guests we'll take a short break more coming up on NDTV stay tuned